Oh, shalom. Shalom, my friends. Shalom, my enemies. This is your old pal, Rabbi Saul Solomon. I am founder and spiritual leader of Temple Sons of Bitches. And oh, oh, aren't we excited? We are waiting for the entrance into the neighborhood of a TV star. Oh, here she is. Here she is. <laughs> gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. And, and even the framing, uh, 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 except she froze. She momentarily froze. Come back, Catherine Lee Scott. Come back to us. Don't go away. The, the spirit uh, of is calling you. I up, oh, head, hello, move, wiggle a little bit. There you are. Hello. <laughs> hello to you, Catherine Lee Scott. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I've got my morning coffee and I'm pleased to be here. Oh, I'm so happy that you have a refreshing beverage to be with us. <laughs> oh, did it spill? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, light. we're fine. <laughs> I was just savoring the coffee. This is important. So your your voice seems okay. Your your video's a little bit on the freezy What's side. Happening? Oh, there we go. Then just just try not to. I don't know. Maybe don't wiggle your foot because it's, it's taking too much bandwidth. I don't know where, where, where oh, there you, I'm seeing you smiling. I think we're better. I think uh, you might freeze here and there, but as long as we can talk to you and hear you, this is good. So welcome, by the way, welcome to the good. day. Good, good morning to you. How are you? How are you? How's, uh, how are you? You're half frozen is how you are. I'm, I could. Uh, my family is in good health. Uh, I've got a wonderful boyfriend. <laughs> well, how can I complain? All right. How did you meet your, well, you know, I, I, I'm hoping it wasn't Grinder. How did you meet the boy that you're seeing now? I, how did I meet my boyfriend? Yes. Did you? Yes. I want to know, to, to share. How did you meet your, your I, current uh, beau? My my boyfriend and I are, well, well, we're both writers and a mutual friend who's a writer said, you know, you really ought to meet this guy. He's really great fun. Um, as, as Well, I lost my husband 12 years ago. He lost his wife four years ago and, uh, and um, or five years ago. Anyway, uh, we met um, just um, three years ago and it's just been bliss. Oh, my muzzle, my muzzle. Now, do you see the big M word? I'm very lucky. Okay, it's very lucky. Do, no, do, no, no, I, you know, I don't think so. Uh, you know, if, uh, I've been, um, uh, I'm selected to have this wonderful relationship. I'm not sure that we'll get married. We, um, we haven't really talked about that. It, it doesn't feel like it's wholly necessary. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, yeah, but if you ever need someone to conduct the ceremony, yeah, my fees are listed on my website. So you, you, it's just there. Uh, out there, you know, and, and I get to eat free at the, uh, at the party. What a nice oh. offer. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, I have not yet mentioned that why people know this woman, why they know Catherine Lee Scott. The main reason, although there's lots of reasons to know her, is first of all, she was on the TV program Dark Shadows in several different roles for several different years. Dark Shadows was this gothic uh, soap opera on American television that, that uh, people watch. But you've also done a bunch of movies. We'll talk about a bit about that. And you've written books, as you've already kind of mentioned. And let's remind everybody, she is going to be like, you can see this beautiful woman in person live. I mean, her boyfriend gets to do it for free. You can pay some money to go see her at the Mad Monster Expo 2023. This is happening in Concord, North Carolina in late August, August 25th, 26th, and 27th. For more information, go to madmonster.com. So what are you going to be? Are you going to be signing things? Are you going to be uh, talking with people, performing? Are you Are going to be juggling? What are you going to do at the Mad Monster Expo? No. The reason why I do these, uh, uh, and I don't do them very often, but I really enjoy meeting the fans of Dark Shadows. And of course, I, you know, I signed the books, uh, mostly uh, Dark Shadows Return to Colin, which, which is a book I wrote several years ago, about five decades of Dark Shadows. But it's also fun to just chat with fans, answer their questions, and find out about them. You know, so many kids, uh, you know, ran home from school to watch the show. And now we have uh, three, maybe four generations of, of fans who are still watching it 
because it's streaming, uh, sort of find out what their experience was. Um, and I think because of the role that I played, Maggie Evans and Josette Dupre, uh, the main squeeze of uh, Vampire Barnabas Collins, um, I can't tell you how many people say, you got me through a terrible childhood. The best memory I have was running home from school and sitting on the couch and watching Dark Shadows with my grandma. Um, and, and it's just, it's wonderful that oh, oh, to do this thing that you did uh, really an impact on his life. You're freezing a little bit, but we got most of Were you a fan? Um, oh, I, I wasn't old enough. I, okay. I, I'm only 26, uh, so, as a, but I, I'm going to rediscover them on streaming and on YouTube. But let me ask, what is the funniest or most weird question a fan has asked you at one of these monster com things? Oh, gosh. I, uh, oh, I, I get asked such crazy things. Well, first of all, you know, when people, when you come into people's living room, uh, Uh oh. Every day they get to know you as sort of a friend and expect me to talk about Pop, the guy who has played my father on the show, or my boyfriend Joe, or, <laughs> um, you know, they kind of uh, conflate <laughs> Catherine Lee Scott, the actress, with those roles. So that's kind of funny because you have to gently, because it, it's meaningful to them, you have to kind of gently lead them back to reality. I mean, did you ever really come across like crazy people who live in that way, you know, think you're a vampirist or they want to bite your neck or something or, or be like Jonathan Fred? No. No, no I, I like to think that the Dark Shadows fans are a, a cut above other <laughs> other fans. They are um, fans of this program, I'll tell you that. that. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, they, they really... Um, they're really great fun to talk to. And a lot of them have gone into wonderful fields. Uh, you know, they've, they, uh, they're very successful and, and it's fun to talk to them and, and to see, uh, you know, what the little kid was that watched you on television and what they grew up to be. So no, I, I have an uh -oh. fan that was difficult to deal with. Let me ask, by the way, speaking of difficult to do, is, is your boyfriend making breakfast over there? What the hell's going on in your place? I'm hearing like, like China smashing and then forks and knives. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, you know what? It's, it, uh, <laughs> it's Saturday morning. It could be a second cup of coffee. It could be the dishwasher. <laughs> Wait until the Airedale comes through and starts barking. <laughs> well, if you make me a bagel, toasted extra butter i will put you with a schmear with we'll a little lox could you would you yeah, mind or would you do a, a, a toasted bagel a bit of schmear okay coming up dip it lightly in borscht if you could that would be a very beautiful okay. thing <laughs> all right coming right up <laughs> so but more seriously tell us about your the first acting role that you got whether it's in live theater or whether it was film that you remember that, that you did all the way back what well what? My very first act, my very first acting role, I, I think, was when I was in second grade, and I wrote a play about George Washington. Gave all the good lines to Martha Washington. That was my role, and uh, and then I, uh, I we performed it for the the whole second grade class, and it was wonderful experience. I think I've been an actor since then. But my first professional job on camera, you know, in a in an acting role was Dark Shadows. And there were so many young actors that got their start in the show. Um, in, in addition to me, there was uh, Laura Parker and I had lunch with her. I spent six hours with her the other day. We're such close friends. And uh, Kate Jackson, David Selby, Jimmy Storm, uh, Chris Pennock. Uh, uh, there are so many of us that, that really got our start on the show. No and how lucky we were. We Oh, to come out of acting class and, and uh, your very first job, you're playing uh, roles that, that take you into the uh, 18th century uh, and to do costume drama and, uh, and do what is essentially live television. It was a remarkable experience. We were just hugely lucky.
And of course, that leads to the obvious next question. Since it was live, live television for a while, gotta tell like disaster moments, moments of like this fell, uh, so and so forgot the lie, you know, tell. And the knob came up in my hand. Oh, wait. There was another time when I was in my, what? The, the, the doorknob came off in my hand. I stood there with the doorknob in my hand. Uh, there was another instance when I had a scene with my father and a piece of flashing from one of the lights uh, up above dropped right between us. I mean, <laughs> it could have caused injury. Uh, and we just went on the scene. It was live. We couldn't stop. We couldn't go back. Uh, what we did is what you saw. Now, was that overall more fun than later on doing scripted television, waiting two hours for a take, uh, doing movies, certainly, like where you're in the trailer for three hours and then you come out and you do something eight times? Tell me. Well, oh, oh, wait, you're ta are you talking about when we, we switched from doing a television series and when, then when we did House of Dark Shadows, the movie? Or, or even just you as an actress when you started um, to do other... That was things like when 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 because you know that was live tv but you've done others since then yeah. you, you know you will find uh actors of my vintage are really they really know their lines and i'm i've now entered my eighth decade i have to say i know uh i i know how to do a first take uh, that's usable. Uh, when you're doing film, of course, you do multiple takes and close-ups and all the rest of it. But uh, people of my vintage, uh, they're not going to forget their lines. They are going to be prepared. And that comes out of all of all of the summer stock, uh, where you learn lines one day and you're on stage the next, uh, and doing live television. Uh, it's, a, it's a great training ground. Now, can you know, you, because you can sit on a set you can sit on a set for hours while they're doing all of the lighting, uh, but then, you know, and they get the camera adjusted and all the rest of it, and you come on, you're expected to just deliver like that. And, and if you fluff a line and they have to stop, everybody looks at you and grow. It, you know, it's... Uh, uh, you know, let's... Uh, every time, not the, <laughs> not the sound uh, of an airplane flies overhead, you know, and that's all understood. But an actor fluffing a line um, and ruining a take uh, or not acing it, you know, really doing it emotionally, uh, you know, that's, um, um, that's a mark against you. Oh, Although nowadays, I think with... Um... Move film itself being cheaper or just digital, you know, cheaper and um, people using handheld cameras and stuff. They're probably a little easier on that. They're probably, if you have to do a takeover, they just oh, keep going, just go, you know. And it has I know. Well, now it is, yes. Now, uh, film is very seldom used, it's all digital. And, uh, you know, I, as a matter of fact, last week, um, I, I did um, uh, several days on a, a new feature, a comedy. So in front of the camera, and the thing isn't in alignment, it has to, uh, the director saying, go, go back, go back, uh, keep rolling, go back, and you re, you know, you, you do the scene again, and there's been no cut in the take. So uh, in the 55 uh, years that I've been a, a professional actress, uh, all of the technological changes and um, and you have to um, you have to learn they go when you when they started doing multiple handheld cameras you know uh, we were doing uh, a show some elsewhere and we were t t uh, and uh, uh, blues and those kinds of shows those were back in the 1990s that's already what 30 years ago and uh, and already this new technology was in place so uh, you have to. The times I'm happy to do so. I want I want to remind people we're talking with Catherine Lee Scott and to kind of I just so you know Catherine if there's some pausing and whatever I have a lot of time you're freezing 
So we're, we're just seeing, uh, like hearing nothing, seeing your face frozen. And then it sort of catches up sometimes and sometimes we lose it. I don't think there's anything we can really do about that. Well, but I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that's weather related because I'm positioned in a place where I've got very good internet connection and that doesn't happen. So I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering what the atmosphere are like. Where, where are you, by the way? Are you? Are you? I'm in, uh, I'm in Upper State, New York. I'm in uh, about an hour out of Manhattan. Oh, well, I, I don't think the Canadian fires are doing anything. I, I, who knows? Oh, we've got bad air quality uh, as a result of that. Oh yeah. Hopefully, oh, I, I get bad air quality every time I have a brisket sandwich. You don't want to be around me for two hours. <laughs> we're talking. About so where are you located? Well, well uh, at the moment, you? I'm in Maryland, although my congregation is in Great Neck, New York. It's a long commute, but I manage it. Uh, okay. so, I, mean, I, don't, uh, I don't understand why, why uh, it's freezing, because that never happens. But I hope you're able to use this. I understand you're going to be editing, yes? Well, well no, okay. we're, we're live. By the way, we're live. We're live on Facebook. People are watching this right now. I, we should have <laughs> told this to you. Oh, yeah, um, okay. <laughs> you, you can tell by the, the fancy way I'm dressed that uh, I wanted to dress up for the occasion. But let me ask you, um, you talked about doing summer stock. You talked about doing theater as well as live TV. You, did you or did you not do a long run of a show with Jimmy Stewart? Yes, in London. I was so lucky. I did Harvey, which is a wonderful, fun, uh, old chestnut of a play. And we, uh, we did a six month run, which meant that I was with, working with Jimmy for seven months. And every matinee day on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we would go to the same restaurant, order the same meal, just the two of us, and sit and talk for an hour. And on Wednesdays, I paid, and on Saturdays, he paid. Uh, it, oh. was just the most, yeah, it was just the most wonderful, uh, lovely chance to really get to know somebody. And Jimmy and I remained close friends and until he passed away. And in fact, uh, oddly enough, I um, soon after I worked with Jimmy Stewart and his friend, uh, John Wayne, I did a movie with him. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 And uh, I was working in London and, uh, and then shortly afterward, I moved to Los Angeles and I lived uh, let me see, I guess three blocks away from Jimmy. I mean, I, I, it was walking distance. So uh, I saw him in L.A. and and, uh, no, and uh, was, tell us a uh, Jimmy Stewart anecdote, something he might have shared with you over lunch or some funny story. Oh, you know, I would I would always I, I said, was there anybody that really just knocked your socks off and you just couldn't believe uh, you were me? Were you ever starstruck? And he said, yes. He said we were starstruck by Greta Garbo, and <laughs> he said that they used to kind of hide behind the scenery just to watch her work, and uh, you know, uh, just a wonderful. Uh, he just had wonderful stories. He he was um, an environmentalist. He loved uh, he he and his wife and his two daughters loved to go to Africa, and uh, they did photographic safaris. But he had wonderful stories about uh, Henry Fonda and, and their days together, living in a house that they didn't re uh, renting a house when they were working at the Provincetown uh, with the Provincetown Players, and they were both just you know young young guys, and uh, and they discovered that the house they rented was overrun with feral cats, <laughs> and his wonderful stories. <laughs> about all of these cats uh, that that uh, just kind of took over their lives. But um, he was- And did he have any Henry Fonda stories? Oh, he was, well, he and Henry Fonda were so close. And while we were doing Harvey, uh, uh, Henry Fonda came to London to do uh, Darrow, which was, you know, the, the, um, the show about Clarence Darrow. And uh, at top of the show, and you won't believe this, was I believe for us, top of the show pr uh, ticket price was three pound oh twenty, which was at the time was maybe uh, just under five dollars for top of the. But that was top of the show price ticket. I still couldn't afford it with my salary. And, uh, and Henry Fonda, uh, his show was going to charge, uh, I think, four pound. And when he discovered that discrepancy. Uh, Henry Fonda said, "Absolutely not. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to outprice. 
<laughs> Jimmy's show, he said, I want my top of the ticket price to be the same as Jimmy's, which, you know, was a wonderful, uh, it was a one, it was just, these guys just simply understood how to deal with the public and how to deal with, uh, they were so comfortable in their own skin. They came out of theater. Uh, they came out of the early days, frankly, the early days of talkies. I think uh, one of Jimmy's first roles was in A Thin Man uh, in the early 30s. Then, and the first talkies were 1929, Bulldog Drummond and so on. Yes. So uh, these guys grew up with the industry. And, uh, and when Jimmy did Winchester 77, he was the first actor that got um, uh, a, a part of the take. You know, uh, he got... Oh, uh, uh, mm, yeah, we're talking, yes. Uh, it was Bill Wasserman, who was his agent at the time. And, uh, and, and Jimmy did the, the film for, for a fee, but then he got a back end. And, uh, and, and uh, of course, residuals came in with Ron, Ronald Reagan, uh, who ran the Screen Actors Guild? Uh, it, there's some there's some wonderful history there, uh, but I remember uh, you know before Ronald Reagan uh, was heading up the Screen Actors Guild, which by the way we're on strike right now. Uh, they um, they got uh, they started getting residuals. I still get residuals for doing Dark Shadows. Um, and that is unheard of. None of the other soap operas uh you know are rerun they never get residuals and huh. uh and we do 55 years later we still get checks in the mail that's but by the way i assume you are supportive of the actors going on strike and the writers being on strike for this whole new world of how media you know, how entertainment is created um do, do you think it's resolved oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I am I am so pro union in this respect that I've been I was out picketing in Los Angeles with the Writers Guild. Uh, I feel I feel so strongly uh, that the people who run the studios uh, walk away with pay packets, you know, like forty five million, and then consider what we're asking for uh, as unrealistic. And we're the the creative and craft people who make their earnings possible. So uh, I mean, anybody, anybody can understand that. Uh, that kind of corporate greed, I'm, I'm shocked. Are you, are you really shocked? You're shocked. You are shocked by corporate greed. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked that, uh, that otherwise reasonable people can actually say that their earnings, 45 million, 54 million, whatever they get, uh, in bonuses and pay packets and so on, that that's realistic. But asking, uh, you know, writers who actually create these shows, and they do that for free. You you create a show and then it's bought. Right. So there's a lot of work that one never gets paid for. And actors actors do an awful lot of work that is not paid for. And one of the things that really sticks in the craw is that it's now possible you know, to take a, a digital image of a young actor, a 20, 22 year old actor, and forever after, uh, that image is owned and can be used in, uh, in any way that they want to. Uh, uh, AI now is, is capable of, of uh, Hey, look, I mean, I mean, Harrison Ford looked 20. I mean, this is uh, yeah, what they can do. Now, now, let me ask you, we have a few minutes before we move to the quiz portion of the show where, where you and Dave. And oh, yes. And I wanted to, yes. And I wanted to say for all yeah. Dark Shadows fans, um, the uh, the book uh, Dark Shadows Return to Collinwood, if you are watching these uh, these reruns, uh, by all means, this book has all of the uh, has an overview of all of the plots, which were very confusing at times, like the Leviathan plot. Uh, so if you've uh, if you've got the book, you can actually uh, read about what each episode is about, and it gives you all of these wonderful uh, behind the scenes anecdotes about what it was like to film that day and what happened. So uh, it's a real uh, it's a real bonus if you're a Dark Shadows fan. What was the name of the book again, and where can people get it? It's called Dark Shadows: Return to Collinwood, and you'll find all of these books uh, out the show. You'll find them on my website, uh, www.catherineleescott.com. 
and uh, and I'm happy to sign any book or photograph or whatever. And I hope I'm going to see you at the Mad Monster on uh, August 25th to the 27th in Concord, um, North Carolina. That should be great fun. You can fly into Charlotte, and it's just a, a short little ride. Now Concord. we still we still do have a couple of minutes, but I'm glad you were able to push that book. You have yeah, some I, books. No. Yes. You, you've written a book. Uh, there was a book of your late husband's photograph or, or, or paintings or something like that? Is well, that you know, yes, I, uh, I, I have two uh, husbands who passed away. The first one was a time life photographer, Ben Martin. And uh, he was a wonderful uh, photographer who, uh, you know, his photographs are uh, available in Getty Images, but they're also in several art galleries and uh, one in New York, one in, in LA. And among them, uh, he photographed all of these wonderful young artists. They were the same age he was. Uh, and he photographed them in their studios like Mark Rothko and um, uh, oh gosh, uh, Larry Rivers, Helen Frankenthaler, uh, uh, Salvador Dali, uh, uh, Roy Lichtenstein. <laughs> wonderful. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. about 30 of these so uh, these these photographs are available and then uh my husband uh jeff miller who was the founding editor of los angeles magazine the first city magazine in the country and there are about 400 city magazines now that use the his template uh that he started at uh, for la magazine and uh and that was back in 1960 and when he passed away i donated his papers to ucla but I also did a, a, a series of books on caregiving because uh, he, he was diagnosed with progressive supranuclear palsy, which is like uh, several other diseases, including Lewy body with dementia, which Robin Williams had, and, um, and, uh, and Lou Gehrig's disease, a, uh, ALS. Uh, and, and there are about five of these prime of life diseases that are sometimes referred to as Parkinson's plus. But, there's no cure for them. So I wrote the book uh, uh, about caregiving called Last Dance at the Savoy and, uh, and also Now With You, Now Without, uh, almost as a, a primer on how to care for somebody with a neurological disease that is progressive. Wow. See, if, if I ever got to be got asking to... that question, because uh, I'm I'm very proud of uh, doing both of those books and also reissuing Marcel Marceau, Master of Mime, uh, which was my first husband's uh, book about uh, the great mime artist. Oh, all of these. Are, by the way, can, what was it? Catherine Lee Scott dot com. That's is, correct. Don't yes. really go there. Catherine, K-A-T-H-R-Y-N, Lee, L-E-I-G-H, like Janet Lee, Scott, like Scott, <laughs> dot com. <laughs> Get these books, get, and also go see her, of course. Now, we have one more question before I have to go. Dave comes in. You stay there. You don't go anywhere, but you stay there. You play the quiz. But let me ask you, when you brought up uh, John Wayne. Do you have a John Wayne story? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, you know, <laughs> I really love that guy. I did a film called Brannigan, and I played uh, uh, an air hostess, and, and, I, I, well, here's the funny story. Much of what I did ended up on the cutting room floor because he plays a detective uh, who goes rogue. He comes to London and he's he's got a gun that he's going to carry on. And, and of course, that was right in the middle of all of those skyjackings. And I think uh, wiser heads prevailed and they did a bit of editing, thank God. Uh, but it, he was wonderful to work with. And uh, and I, rem I remember we both had an affinity for tuna fish sandwiches. So <laughs> that's what we ate for lunch. And I had a wonderful time chatting with him because of course I was doing Harvey with Jimmy Stewart then. And, uh, and uh, any friend of Jimmy's was a friend of his. Wow, just hearing these names. I mean, I, you know what? We have one more minute, so one more, one more, one more. You were also in the film version of The Great Gatsby that featured Mia Farrow and, uh, and Robert Redford. Do you have a, a Redford story, a Farrow story, a Gatsby story? Oh. A T.J. Eckelbert story, anything, what? I'll tell you what was really fun about that. We were, we were filming at Pinewood, 
And Pinewood at that time, it was full of these wonderful craftspeople, hairdressers and makeup and everything, who uh, actually knew how to do curling irons with Marcel Waves and so on. It was, I think all of us, uh, uh, everybody in the company loved doing that. I loved working with Sam Waterston, uh, you know, who played uh, Nick Carroll Way. And, uh, and I remember being on set when, uh, you know, Mia Farrow and Robert Redford showed up. There was one scene that I was in where everybody was there. And, and, and just the, um, the kind of camaraderie there's you cannot and I, I stress this cannot be starstruck when you're working uh with somebody i was never starstruck working with uh, john wayne or, or dirk bogard lana turner jimmy stewart joan bennett any of them because you can't do your work if you're starstruck and and so as soon as an actor of that of that renown put it that way uh, comes on set and, and you start working with them, you are just two actors doing your job. This is, this is why you were able for the past half hour to talk to me without being frightened, without being nervous, without because because this is, come on, now I, I'm added to the canon. Pick up on that. Of extraordinary screen time that you've had with people. I mean, okay, Dirk Bogard and then Rabbi Sal Solomon. Of course, we have been the same breath in the same breath in the same breath. Well, with me, two breaths, because I'm a little short of breath these days. But we've been delightfully chatting with Catherine Lee Scott, who is is um, one more time. She's going to be appearing at the Mad Monster Expo 2023, August 25th through the 27th. Get your tickets at MadMonster.com and buy her books at CatherineLeeScott.com. Now, 